Hey guys, it's Casey again here at Detroit Rebuild Specialist. Uh, today I wanted to make a little video kind of explaining what us as mechanics are looking at when we do a regen on your truck. Okay? A lot of guys out there on the road, you know, put their put their trucks into a regen when they have a check engine light, thinking it's gonna fix the problem. Um, but I want to explain to you guys how a regen works just because your truck does a regen for 30 minutes or an hour or an hour and a half doesn't mean that everything's working as it should okay there's a lot of um, inlet and outlet pressures temp sensors knox efficiency um, your doser injector right here there's a lot going on in a regen that people probably don't realize and without looking at this screen you you don't really know what's going on so if you're ever at a TA truck stop or, or, or somewhere like that and somebody puts your truck into a region and walks away and comes back in an hour, they're not somebody you need to be trusting, okay? Because if you're not watching this screen to watch these values, then, then you know, you're pissing in the wind. You're throwing your money out the window because what's going to happen, and, I'm, and everybody's going to comment and say, yeah, that happens to me all the time. You're going to go down the road. They're going to clear your fault code. You're going to make it 50 miles, 20 miles, a mile, whatever, and your check engine light's going to come back on because they didn't fix anything. They put into a region and cleared your fault codes. So let's go ahead and start it. We're going to click the start region. It's going to ask me some couple questions. We're good to go. You might hear the engine rev up. You'll be able to watch my RPMs here revving up. Okay. My intake throttle valve is commanding. All right, so what this is doing is gonna heat up the truck faster, okay? So the first thing I wanna look at when I start a regen is my inlet DOC pressure right here, okay? We want that number to basically go down during the regen, okay? Um, if it gets over one PSI, two, three, you've got like plug DOC filters, okay? And that's very bad, that's what they call a face plug. Your DOCs are face plugged. If you've got that problem, um, you're more than likely going to need a new one box. Um, they have a DOC face plug routine that basically is a four hour regen. Um, and basically, like I said, it tries to bake all that stuff out, but more than likely it's not going to work. A um, couple other things we're going to look at here is my doser injector st in, uh, status. What this is, is that is when your fuel injector in your exhaust pipe starts to um, inject fuel into your exhaust stream, which is gonna heat up the truck rapidly. That's how, it, that's how the region gets to 1100 degrees. Like right now, we're at 400 and 150, okay? These numbers are gonna rise up to 1100 degrees during a region. It might go a little bit over 1100, but that's the, um, that's the temps that we wanna see. Now, if if your truck never reaches those temps, then you have a problem. Uh, you could your your doser injector could be malfunctioning. Uh, more than likely, you have carbon buildup inside your exhaust pipe. You need to pull that off, clean the carbon out, clean the injector nozzle, and put it back in. Um, so that's a couple things. Uh, I'm going to go to the next screen. This is our DPF screen here. I'm going to go to the SCR screen now. All right, because there's two screens you need to look at with very important information on both one. Here's your knock sensors, okay? Our outlet has not enabled yet, okay? If that thing stays red the entire time, we have a problem with our knock sensor, all right? Um, these numbers here, our inlet is reading 389 parts per million of knocks. Okay, the outlet, when it's all said and done, is gonna give you a reading. It should be, it, it, it varies. It should be around 50, 40, 30, 10. It should be a lot lower than your inlet knock sensor. Basically what, what, we're, what we're looking for is a reduction in knocks from the time it enters the one box to the time it leaves the one box. And this number is gonna give you your efficiency, all right? It used to be 70% during a region. I believe Detroit now wants it at like 85%. So if this number does not reach 85% during the region, it's gonna throw a fault code for um, NOx efficiency low. And then what happens is you continue to drive your truck and it still doesn't see it. 
it's gonna throw there we go we just enacted okay so let's see the number here changing zoom in all right um i forgot what i was just saying because i saw that turn green oh yeah basically uh if you continue to drive your truck when it's not converting NOx, you're going to get a 25% D-rate. All right. The next fault code is going to be NOx efficiency very low. Uh, it's going to also come with a DEF quality code. Um, and then a final D-rate at 5 miles an hour. So, you know, you don't want to continue to drive this thing if you got a NOx efficiency low code. All right, so now we're gonna go back to our other screen here. I just like to click back and forth. So we, we're still, oh, here we go. We're about to start injecting fuel now. We're gonna see a lot of other boxes pop up over here once we start injecting fuel. Um, there's a lot of routines that we can run on this to diagnose different, there we go. Okay, Compensa uh, fuel compensation presser. Um, all right, so now you're, you're going to start noticing our temps spike. They're going to go, they're going to start getting hot pretty rapidly because now we're injecting fuel into our exhaust pipe. Um, what else can we see? Oh, yeah, the test. There's a lot of tests that we can run to diagnose different fault codes. Uh, if we want to test the sensors, you know, we can do a low temp regen up here. Uh, where we at? Actions. After treatment. No. Oh, wait. Where is that? No, that's going to be in a different spot. My bad. It's down here. Low temp regen is going to be down here. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to hold the phone and look at the camera at the same time. Your low temp region should be here. There it is. Performance check. Low temp ATD. All right. Um, see, I don't like this right here. 1.2. That's my inlet pressure. That means we got we got high pressure. All right. Before th that that sensor is before the DOC filters. Right before it. So we need that number to go down by the end of the uh, region. And like I said, this this may look like German to some people, uh, and it probably probably is. I mean, if you don't know what all these DOC inlet pressure, outlet pressure, temps, if you don't know what those are or what they do, this is this looks like some serious shit. So I'm just trying to simplify it a little bit for you guys, and really just to explain that there's a shit ton going on during a region, way more than you think. All right, I'm going to click back to my SCR screen to see if we're converting NOx. Right, here we go. We're converting NOx. So we got 271 parts per million going in, and it's converting NOx at 67, uh, 64 parts per million coming out. With a NOx efficiency rate of 78, and it's changing. You can see over here, we got our DPF pump. Uh, gallons per hour just in case you're wondering what those numbers were we got our def pump speed down here that's our pump this particular system is the non-air um, it's the newer system that they're that they're running now they did away with the air there's so many problems with it all right we're up to 81 percent nox efficiency just to kind of give you guys a little explanation of how this would work not that this is legal, but if you were to take out your outlet knock sensor, say you plug one in and just leave it hanging outside your box, didn't install it in the box, you should have over 100% uh, NOx efficiency because that sensor is going to be reading outside air, which has absolutely no NOx. Okay? Uh, I probably shouldn't have told you that because now people are going to be running around with NOx sensors sitting outside their one box. Uh, if you get caught... DOT, you're going to be in big trouble, but I'm just trying to explain how it works. If you've got a sensor that's reading 279 parts per million of NOx going in the one box, and then your NOx sensor is not, your outlet's not even in the box, it's just sitting outside, taped up to the side, you should have 100% NOx efficiency. 
Um, so let's go over here and look, our temps are doing great. All right, we're rising as normal. We're gonna go back to our DPF uh, screen. Look at here, inlet pressure has went down like it's supposed to. I would like to see it a lot lower than that, but we got a long way to go in this region. Um, but everything so far is looking good. We can also check what zone we're in as far as uh, zone one, two, three, four. Right now, see this truck really didn't even, well it needed a region because our DOC inlet pressure was high, but uh, it was in zone zero. So you don't start getting check engine lights until that zone starts going up. <clears throat> but based on what I see so far, we're converting NOx to 89%, which is wonderful. You can see how parts per million going in, parts per million coming out is way less. It looks amazing. Our DEF qu uh, quantity is perfect. Your requested versus your actual. This here is what uh, the ECM wants to see. It's a requested value. Right there, requested value. And then this is your real-time actual value. It's what it's, what it's actually putting out. So that's another thing. If, you're, if the ECM is requesting 1,150 gallons per hour DEF, and it's only pumping out, let's just say 50, well then you're going to have a problem with your pump and it's going to throw a, fall, uh, a check engine light. Alright. I hope this video turns out good as far as quality wise for you guys on the internet. I'll post this later on tonight. So, uh, anyhow, I'll go through some other things while I'm in here. If you guys want your road speed turned up so you can't go fast enough, um, you know, we can go in here and bump your road speed up. Right now, he's maxed out at 94 miles an hour. His cruise control is at 94 miles an hour. Oh, one other thing. You need to make sure when people are turning up your road speed that the absolute diagnostic value is higher than your road speed, which it is. His is 99 here, and his road speed is 94. If somebody turns your road speed up higher than this number right here, which this number is not always 99, it could be like 75. If they turn your road speed up higher than that, every time you go, every time your speedometer goes over that limit, you're gonna have a check engine light come on. And then when you get back down below this number, it's gonna go back off. So you're gonna be like, why is my check engine light coming on every time I, you know, go fast? Anyhow, that's not a big deal. Idle shutdown is disabled. If you want that disabled. Um, like I said, guys, there's so much in here in the diagnostic link. Troubleshooting, I mean, you name it, man. There's. So much going on. Um, actions. Let's see what else is in here. Rating. Let's see what this truck is rated at. Oh, this is a big thing. Very big. A lot of customers say, "Hey, can you turn my horsepower up?" This is my answer to that question. I can go to your ratings. There's going to be three levels. Uh, this one has 475 and 455. Okay, and then 455 cruise. So. I can change your horsepower as long as the settings are already in here. Like say this one was a, was a fleet truck and they had it set to 455. I can set this to the high power which would be 475. All right. Um, so the answer is yes and no. If it's in here, like say this was down here at the four, you know, I could click this, send it. Right now it's already in high power. So he's, he's maxed out at 475 horsepower. I'm not a programmer. I can't actually start tuning trucks. Not with this software. Close out of here. What else we got? Oh, there's so much. EGR test, flow test, ducts pressure sensor re uh, recalibration. If you get a fault code for your uh, out of calibration, we can reset it. Um, let's check his. 
Oh, his acid accumulators are going to be zero because we just cleaned his filters. All right. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video, but if not, it'll be an hour-long video, and nobody's going to want to watch an hour-long video. But like I said, everything's looking great. Uh, the temps are rising. Well, I don't like this right here. Our NOx has went down. We're not converting NOx at the rate that we were before. All right, so I'm going to continue to watch this and see what we got going on. But that was like a basic overview of what all these, uh, you know, pressures and temps mean. DOC inlet temp, obviously, is your temp before your DOC filters. That's, you know, obvious. Your outlet temp and then your DPF outlet temp, which is after all the filters. Um, so... Yeah, I'm going to watch this a little more closely because our NOx efficiency is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. So uh, if you guys got any questions, give us a call. Detroit Rebuild Specialist. Uh, oh, see, there we go. Now we're acting normal again. It's going to start going back down. So the lower this number gets here, the higher my efficiency will go. And sometimes it acts funny, but for the most part, it needs to stay up throughout the entire region. If not... You'll get a check engine light on the dash. All right. So. Hi, right, guys. Peace out.